I wanted to spend some time this week prepping for some of my spring and summer projects and I'm starting with a letter low kit drafting project. I found this wide leg pleated pants pattern in the kit that I purchased last summer and thought this would be perfect for the linen pants that I want to make. Now these kits come as basically small sheets of paper with tiny little pattern pieces on them and using the measurements specified on each of these little pattern pieces, you plot out a larger version of the pattern. I had some viewer comments on the last video that I did on the system that recommended copying these little sheets of paper so that you don't destroy the original page from the book, which I thought was a great idea. So I decided to do it that way this time and I went ahead and cut all of the separate pieces apart from each other so it would be easier to work with them. I also matched up the piece against the original page to make sure that the scale was correct. And one small complaint that I have is that it's a little hard to know exactly where to place this little pattern on your pattern paper. It can kind of run off the edge if you don't place it just right, which can be a little frustrating. Now the cool thing about this system is that you only need two measurements. So if you're making a pair of pants, you just need your hip measurement and then you place a little pin in the corresponding hole on the tape measure and then place that through the little crosshairs on the pattern. And then you have these little numbers here that you align the tape measure with and mark the corresponding measurements. And this goes really quickly. It's really fun to use. It's really easy to use. I probably drafted this pattern in about 30 minutes. Once you have all of your points plotted, you can go around and connect all the dots to create the pattern piece. Now these patterns do not include seam allowance, so you'll have to add your desired seam allowance to each of the pattern pieces. I kind of went back through and checked all of my points and found a few places where I marked incorrectly, so I just crossed those out to make sure that I didn't connect those in my pattern. Then I just removed the little sheet of paper and taped it back to the original pattern that I can store in the booklet. I also made sure to record all of my pattern information, especially my measurements at the time that I drafted this pattern. And then I made sure to add seam allowance to all of the pattern pieces and I'm going with a 5 8 inch seam allowance on this pattern. I have another video here on the channel where I made a little black dress using this kit and I will link it down below in the description and in the cards above. So I spent a little bit of time this weekend drafting out the Lutterlow pleated pants pattern. And I only did the leg pieces. I'm actually gonna reuse the pocket and the waistband from another pair of pants that I drafted. That's just a basic wide leg pants pattern that I've shown you guys before. Now I just kinda wanna compare these pattern pieces to that pants pattern that I've already drafted. I know the fit of the other pants pattern. I'm gonna be using that pants pattern as kind of a sloper for comparison purposes. The letter low pattern uses just your hip measurement. So it's just using that one measurement. And since my waistline usually falls into a different size than my hip measurement, I knew that it was probably gonna to be too big in the waist. That's a relatively easy fix. And I think this is where having a little bit of experience with drafting is really gonna come in handy. And it's definitely not a super beginner friendly system for that reason. It's still a great system. I think this is, you know, I think there's, there's something out there for everybody. And this is something that if you are, you know, interested in doing a little bit of light drafting, it's a lot of fun to use. You do still have to know a little bit about drafting patterns and garment construction because there are no instructions with these patterns. When I compare my pants sloper to the letter low pattern. So here I have the letter low pattern. This part right here is going to be the pleat and this here is going to be a crease that runs right down the middle of the pants and it also is right at the center of the pants leg width. So that looked pretty close where it was drafted on the pattern. First things first, I went ahead and folded the crease on the front leg here like so. It almost matched up perfectly. It's a little bit off here when I fold it right down the center making sure that the pants leg is actually folded right in half. When I fold this over to create the pleat, um, again, it's just a little bit off. You can see here the dotted line is where the letter low kit told me to draw it. And then I just went ahead and drafted a line here, kind of where that matched up. Now I'm going to need to true the top here at the waistband just because this is not really matching up perfectly, which I think that's a little bit to be expected just because of the way that you draft the, the pattern. I mean, even being off by a millimeter can cause a quarter inch or more of difference in the actual pattern because you're basically just blowing up this really small pattern. So now that I've got that folded, I kind of know where that is. I would just want to go in and basically trim off 
this to create kind of a smooth finished waistline here. And as far as the um, overall ease for the pants leg, I think I'm gonna be fine with that because if I unfold this and line up the crotch here, kind of accounting for the difference in seam allowance, I mean, you can see I have plenty of ease here and I probably will end up having just a little bit more ease in the pleated pants than I do in the pants sloper, but I'm okay with that for now. And I can always, you know, reduce that later if I feel like it's too much. Now the back pants leg feels a lot bigger actually. And I'm gonna just kind of go with it and see how it, how it works out. But if I compare the back pants with my back pants sloper, um, you can kind of see a few things here. So for one thing, the back rise is, is quite a bit taller. And I'm not gonna do anything about that right now. I'm just kind of curious to see how that fits because that's something that would be relatively easy to adjust. And the back waist is much, much bigger. I think I am gonna have to reduce this by almost two inches in the back, on the back waist. Again, I think that the overall width here is fine when I look at it compared to this. So now that I've kind of investigated the pattern a little bit and kind of understand the fit based on another pair of pants that fit me really well, I'm gonna go ahead and make a muslin. I'm not gonna make all of the adjustments just yet because I kind of just wanna see how the pants lay on my body before I start kind of chopping away anything. And I'm just gonna use some muslin material to do just like, I mean, it'll be basically shorts. I'm just gonna kind of muslin the front and the back pattern pieces together and um, see what adjustments I need to make before I sew in my linen. Okay, so I have made this muslin. This is my first stab at this pattern. And the front waist I feel is pretty okay. I'm actually happy with this, the sizing on that. The back is obviously too big. So what I think I'm gonna do is kind of take out some of the side seam on the back side seam to kind of pull that in a little bit. I'm gonna try that first and just kind of see how that affects the fit. Also, I feel like the back rise is like way too high because this will have a waistband on it. So I'm imagining that the waistband will kind of start here and be about an inch and a half. So it'll come right above my belly button because I want these to be pretty high, high rise. The back, um, right now it's kind of hard to really assess the fit of the back. I think it'll be fine once I get everything kind of a little bit more fitted back here, but I am going to trim down the back waist maybe about an inch and then I can kind of make an assessment of the fit a little bit better. Okay, I have made the adjustments that I mentioned before and this is much better. Now, one thing to note about, you know, this cotton muslin material, it's not very forgiving at all. Like it just looks awkward. It doesn't really lay quite right. I am going to be making this out of linen that's going to be, you know, have a lot better drape and it's just going to hang a lot differently. But overall, I think the fit is pretty good. I am probably going to need to kind of do a smoother transition here at the hips from where I kind of take it in at the waist. Not worried about that. I think overall the fit is headed in the right direction. I did trim down the back here so that it would be a little bit better. Um, I do feel a little bit like I'm getting a little bit of a wedgie, even though it's not like tight. I think that could just be because of the seam allowance that is still on the pants. So I think that the, the seat, the shape of the seat and the, the ease that's in the pants is appropriate. So I'm just gonna kind of keep going forward with this. But yeah. Oh, one thing I'll probably do too is just kind of reposition the darts so they're a little bit more centered between the center and the side seam here since I did kind of pull this forward a little bit. So I'll probably just move those over a little bit on the final. So now I'm gonna take all of these adjustments that I've made, which isn't that much really, and I'm going to update the pattern pieces to match the adjustments. decided to take a break from the pants to work on a new pattern that I have in the works. 
So whenever I'm developing a new pattern, I like to print it out at home the same way that you do and work through the pattern. I'll make notes for myself about any, you know, things that I discover about the pattern that need to be updated. This is for a pleated tank and dress based on a dress that I made last summer and I'll link the video below. And it just has a series of pleats across the bodice. And I wanted to do a pattern that had bust cup options. So I'm just working through this on some tissue linen. This linen is just a really nice fabric that I get from Joanne that's so pretty and it's great for flowy summer tops. So I spent a couple of hours working on this pattern, getting the pleats just right, checking out the darts, seeing how this would fit. It is the next day and I went ahead and sewed up a sample of the pattern that I'm working on, just kind of in a tank top form. I really like how this is turning out. I do have a few little things that I need to work out with the construction of this. Also, if you are looking for an awesome tutorial for how to make bias binding, June Made here on YouTube has the most succinct and easy to follow continuous bias tape making tutorial that I have ever found. I always make it the hard way because I could never like wrap my mind around how to make continuous bias tape. And it was so quick. So anyway, I'll link it down below in the description. Anyway, but this one does have darts in the bodice, which I think helps with the fit and the bust. And I am wearing a bra with this right now, just to kind of help with the fitting. And then I was also just kind of playing around with like if I pressed the pleats, but it also looks really, really cute with it just kind of full at the bottom here. It kind of has a baby doll top feel to it. I would definitely wear this. It looks really cute with a pair of like flared jeans and some sandals and as I'm making this today right now, it is like snowing outside again. Today is April 25th. So <sighs> I'm so ready for some warm weather. <laughs> it is so cold today, but it'll be here eventually. And when it is, I'm gonna be ready with all of my warm weather wardrobe stuff. I woke up early and worked on this just to kind of work through some of the ideas I had for this pattern. And I'm a little sewed out this morning, so I'm actually just gonna spend some time doing some batch cutting and get some other projects prepped and ready. So yeah, I'm gonna keep going. tripod thing okay um today is Wednesday and I actually wanted to go out and run a few errands I need to go to the fabric store and get a couple of notions for some of the projects I'm working on I also wanted to pop over to the thrift store one maybe two and then possibly also go to an antique store I kind of just want to look at their furniture because I am looking for a piece of furniture to go in our dining area so I may go over to this place called April's Antiques. I went there a few weeks ago and they had a lot of really cool stuff. And I've just had a lot going on since the last time I went over there. So I haven't had a chance to get back over there in a couple of weeks or more. Actually, it's been probably like three weeks since I went there. So I kind of wanted to go see what kind of stuff they have. And I also need to go to the grocery store. Anyway, I've just got some errand things to do and it's a beautiful, beautiful day. So it just makes you want to be outside and out doing things. So yeah, I'm just gonna go bebop around town, look at some stuff, see if I can find anything cool, then come home. Okay, let's go. craving a Sprite. It just sounded so good. I had a drink machine in there. Uh, 
Oh yeah, that's good. All right, I didn't really find much in there. Um, I kind of hit up on my usual spots. I went back to the furniture. I hit up the jeans and the dresses. I've actually been looking at dresses a lot more at the thrift store lately because I have found a few cool dresses. I've noticed that they have a lot of really uh, nicer dresses, like little black dress type stuff, and then also some slightly more formal or even like businessy type dresses. So if that's something you're looking for, definitely always think about hitting up the thrift store for that kind of thing because they do have a lot of that stuff. I did see a couple of chairs in the dining room. I have kind of mix and match chairs. I'm going for a mix and match vibe in there. And I like some of the like farmhouse style chairs that are, you know, kind of simple lines. And anyway, um, I did find a couple of chairs like that in there, but they needed a little bit more finishing than I'm kind of willing to do right now. And I also checked out the linens. Sometimes I'll find fabric over there. Although this store I feel like doesn't really have usually any fabric. Um, I have found fabric over at the St. Vincent de Paul, which I'm going to next, but this one today didn't really have much that I needed. I'm also kind of not really in the mood to look for clothing right now. I kind of, I want to just like, you know, briefly run through and look for those things since I'm here, but um, I'm really, really trying to find some furniture. So I think now I'm going to head over across town and go to the St. Vincent de Paul. That's my other favorite thrift store. It's a little bit smaller. A lot smaller actually but it's just really well curated um, and I just like kind of going in there I can get in fast get out fast and you know hit all the high points and make it quick uh, and they usually do have some nicer furniture there I don't know why but they usually have some nicer pieces um, so I'm just gonna see what they have I love this little dresser. I only have a place for it, but God, it's so cute. It's only $24, $25. I love that. It's super cute. So I didn't really find anything at St. Vincent de Paul. And actually, while I was looking at the patterns, there was a man kind of, I felt like he was kind of following me a little bit. That was a little weird. Um, he was just kind of lingering. So I went over to another part of the store and then he was over in that part of the store and I was like, all right. So I did find one pattern there. I thought this was just a really cute little pattern. Got it for a dollar. But anyway, so I got the pattern and I got out of there because I was feeling just, I, the guy was probably harmless. I don't know, but it was just making me a little uncomfortable. So I decided to leave. But then I went over to the April's Antiques and looked around there for a little bit. They actually have, they have so much stuff and I really like kind of browsing around in there. I saw a lot of things that I saw last time I was there a few weeks ago, a few new things. Um, I think that's just one of those places I would have to just kind of, you know, go more regularly to find something. And then right next to April's Antiques is a store called Dicker and Deal and they have a lot of furniture too. They have so much stuff, but again, I was just in there a few weeks ago and um, I saw a lot of the same stuff, a few new things, but nothing that was quite what I was looking for. But if, I think if I went there regularly, I probably would end up finding something because they did have a lot of really cool stuff. Probably stuff from estate sales and that kind of thing. You know, a little bit more than what you would find at the thrift store. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna have to keep hitting those up. There's some other places around this area that I've been kind of hearing about for like antiques and that kind of thing. So maybe, you know, over time I'll get to some of the other places and share that here on the channel. So now I'm at Joanne. I'm going to go in here. I just need to get some zippers and I think that's all I really need to get. Um, but I'm just going to kind of browse around a little bit, see if there's anything else that, you know, sparks my interest and in creativity. Then I got to go to the grocery store. Okay. I forgot that I also wanted to look for some fabric to recover the chairs in my dining room. So I'm going to kind of browse through the fabric, look for some upholstery fabric. So yesterday I did find some fabric at Joanne that I want to recover the seat cushions on these chairs with. Last week I mentioned that I wanted to do a little bit of a dining room makeover because our dining room is so bare and I have some thrifted furniture in there that needs a little bit of TLC. And I got these little folding chairs from the thrift store a few months ago now and they are really cute. I think they're vintage. I'm pretty sure they're vintage. They look pretty old and um, they're just a neat little chair. They have a fabric covered cushion and the fabric on the cushions is pretty stained up until they've been used quite a lot. 
And when I was looking through some of my inspiration images on Pinterest that I have pinned for my dining room inspiration, I really liked some of the images that I saw with wooden chairs with a dark cover on the seat cushion. I saw a couple of images with dark green and I thought, oh, I really like that a lot. So I have a rug in the living room that has a little bit of green in it and some like dark blues and kind of olive green tones. And so I was looking for something that was on the darker side of a green. And I did find this kind of velvety upholstery fabric in the value section at Joanne, and I was able to use a coupon on it. A lot of the velvet fabrics that I find in upholstery fabrics are a little too shiny. I just feel like they, they're just too shiny for my liking. This has a little bit more of a matte velvet finish to it. And I just thought it looked really nice. It has a little bit of an antique vibe going on and I think it'll look great on the chairs and it really works well with the green color in the rug in our living room. So I'm gonna cover the seat cushions for both of these chairs today. It shouldn't take that long. And the seat cushion is just screwed to the chair from underneath. So I just flipped the chair over, unscrewed all the screws and the seat cushion lifted right off. And I'm just gonna cover right over the existing fabric that's on the chair because I don't really wanna fuss with having to take all that off. I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal. And I don't really know if there is another fabric kind of keeping the foam on the chairs. And I have a stapler, it's the DeWalt staple gun that I bought back when I refinished my couch, when I recovered the couch in our living room. And it works fantastic, highly, highly recommend. It's very easy to use if you're not ready to like invest in a pneumatic stapler that requires electricity. So I'm gonna get started cutting this fabric. I'm just gonna cut a couple of squares and staple them to the cushions. And I'm going to start at the centers on each edge and kind of work my way around, pulling the fabric nice and tight around the edge of the cushion as I staple and just kind of fold it nice and neat to get a neat finish. So I made the mistake of putting this on the cushion before I really looked at the fabric and there is a crease here in the fabric from where it was folded. I'm gonna see if I can use my steamer to get that out. All right, so I thought I hit record earlier and I did not hit record, it did work. I'm just going to reenact what I did to get the crease out. I just did this and rubbed it across the cushion. And it worked beautifully. Next time I'll remember to hit record.